Welcome to the One Day Painting Challenge. I'm Yvette, and in today's video, we're gonna paint this awesome painting. I'm gonna paint it live and show you step-by-step step everything I do and talk about all the tips and tricks of how I paint this painting. So I encourage you to paint along with me. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. That way, it'll make it easier for you to find the videos in the future. The first thing that I'm gonna do is pre-sketch out all of the lines. As you can see, these lines are just a road map to where we're going to go. I didn't go into any detail. I just blocked out the beard. I just blocked out everything. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy or pretty. Just stare at the photo a little bit and just do a rough outline -y sketch of the silhouette of what we're going to do. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put white because we're going to work on the background first. So I'm going to make a very basic um, sky. Now, this photo, I this was a photo of my cousin when I think he was scuba diving for the day. And this was taken in Cancun. So this came 2D to me as an image, of a photo. And so that really helps out a lot for a lot of reasons because it's already 2D. Um, but... Uh, it's like I kind of use that as reference and I took my time with it. It took me about 15 minutes because I am not a good drawer whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I used a pencil. I would recommend a pencil because then you can just erase it and make it simple and easy on yourself. Um, also be careful you don't get a lot of smudges because um, when you do have the marks, sometimes like you could see here, it rubs off into the paint a little bit. So that's kind of not cool. We don't want that. So just as little markings as possible just to make it make sense. So you can get some basic ideas as to where the big bulks of things are going to be. That way it helps you with portion control. So I have made a mistake and I added way too much paint. I don't need this much white. And I forgot to get myself a paper towel. Make sure that you have paper towels. Usually for all my paintings, I always set out everything. Um, I'll do a video later where I talk about my art studio and little things and tips and tricks that I do. I'm going to wipe off because it's just too much. I'm just going to wipe this paint off. Way too much paint on here. I just need a little bit. Sometimes it's better to use the palette and apply from there, but whatever. I was being lazy. I want to kind of make sure I get everywhere. But I do, I don't, I want to paint, but like I don't want to overdo it. I still want to be able to see the guy. So we're going to wipe off the excess paint. Now this is acrylics that I'm painting in, so they do dry quickly. Because of that, I recommend working rather fast. I like to give myself a window of 15 minutes per color, like to, for life of fluidity. Um, I don't really, I try not to add stuff to my paint because it is what it is and I don't need those little crutches and I think my paintings could possibly be better, but that's just an extra step and more money and just really do I need it or could I just work a little bit faster? So that's kind of the goal. As you work with paint, you'll find your own little mojo and works what works best for you as far as timing and everything. Now, I do want the horizon to be a tiny bit darker. Typically, no, but in this case with the sun, yes. So I'm going to still try to keep the shape of the face. Get that blue. And if you see what's happening, it's naturally making clouds for me. Now, I don't want to have a lot of stripes stripes going on I want to have kind of a blend I'm gonna go into the face just a little bit there we go get some of the excess off on the sides I do like to paint the sides so that way I don't have to frame paintings gives it more of a 3d effect okay that works I'm gonna leave this little white space to be a cloud go and add a little bit more paint now you do want this side to match but I'm going to add a little bit more, get it on there. Don't overwork it like I did right there. Just a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Try not to get straight lines, but then if a little bit of faint straight lines happens, that's kind of okay because then they start indicating clouds. 
I'm going to go ahead and, yep, just a little, uh, too much, I added too much. It's okay, we'll go to the sides and we'll apply that too much to the sides. Work that in. Okay, make sure I don't get the straight lines. I do want the right side of him to appear to just like the left. Um, the more you can do that, the better. Really just, I think that works. Looks good from this angle. I do have some stripe. Oop, there's a line right there. Don't want that one. Now, I chose specifically this photo. I was going to change it and make the horizon straight. Oh, you know what I forgot to paint? I forgot to paint the top of the painting. I was going to go ahead and uh, change the horizon and make it straight. But then he's sitting in a boat. So I thought because of that, by the horizon not being straight on the canvas, it'll appear more that that boat has been moving and our eye will kind of just fill in the blanks and it'll make sense. It's good. Ah! Good, a nice little, yep, don't want to over, I do have some dots here I don't like. Oh, I got a line there I don't like. I'm going to fix that. Yep. Fix it just a little, not too much, just enough to be like, hi, I'm here, and I'm fabulous. That's all we're doing. I'm going to check the sides a little bit and blend them. Okay. Not too much, just a little. Okay, good. So the original photo was taken at dusk and the photo was really dark, um, kind of dingy looking. It had like some red tones in it. I'm going to wash my brush over here. Um, lots of water. Clean it out. Dry it. And then I'm going to set this brush aside. I recommend cleaning your brushes as you go these big fat, fat guys because um, just longevity. Let them last a little bit longer. Okay, so now I'm going to switch for a smaller little guy. He's smaller. You see square. This was what I used the first time, so I'm just going a tiny bit smaller. Okay, so we can do a lot of things at this point. We can stop and let it dry, which I'm actually kind of liking it. Even though this is hyper-realism and this is actually, it was like a purpley red sky, that's, that's okay. Because there was blues, there was a lot going on here. And I'm really trying to simplify this painting. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little, I'm going to dry it a little bit. good I'm liking it loving it it's great I think right now I was gonna put a sun right here and I was gonna fade it into some purples and everything and that's totally cool um, but I've had a lot of people talking about how some of my paintings are a little bit difficult so I'm really gonna kind of dumb it down and make it simpler and easier and then work into it so for right now I'm gonna stay with this um, if it, if the paintings calling me and telling me more more then I think we'll go ahead and do the purples and everything. But for right now, that sky is very good. Um, this is my cousin. He is an avid scuba diver all the time. Oh, scuba diving. I don't know if that's what was happening when this photo was taken, but I'm assuming it was. And uh, there are many days when you're out into the ocean where skies do look like this. So even though my photo isn't exactly exactly, uh, you know what, I'm going to get my base coat down and I'm just going to make it make it blue and I'll come back and touch it up. So get the dark blue, the, the hueiest of the hue of the dark blue. And then try to just get that over. This is a railing right here of the boat. So kind of want to, okay good, we can still see it. I want to still be able to see it so that way when I paint my line it's going to be a straight line. Um, 
can always erase the pencil. It's a little bit harder to erase paint. You just kind of have to paint over it. And it is a few little techniques that I've showed you along the way uh, how to do it. So I just want to preventatively not make it harder for myself and make sure that I keep that line in there that I can still see it. I'm going to make sure this line follows. Oh, geez. I was talking and I wasn't thinking. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the side. Get that all blue. This is our base coat. Now also, I'm painting this as just a because and I saw the photo and it was cool and I asked him if I could use it and he said yeah. And so I'm just having a good time with this. Now, had this have been like a paid gig and a customer was asking me for it, I would try to stay as true to the painting, the picture as possible unless the person who is hiring you is saying, oh, but if you want to, it's, you know, it's okay to change up a little bit. I always like to talk to them first before I go make these huge decisions that I'm just going to make the sky blue. Um, that way, you know, make sure you get paid and stuff and they're happy and, and they get what they like, right? Um, there is a difference between painting for fun and painting to make money. Um, I try to always keep it painting for fun and having a good time. I'm pretty big into that, but you know, money, I, I have to pay my mortgage. I got bills and this is what I do and what I'm good at. So I'm using it as a tool and a means for me to be able to be alive and do stuff. <laughs> so yes, I do take joy in it and artistic and stuff, but I still, you know, if I was getting paid, you're getting paid. That's what the job is. Um, I had a, fr a really good friend of mine, and he, I'm going to turn this. Um, I, if you notice, when I paint, I turn my canvas quite frequently because the angle, so that way I'm not contorting my body and my hand, and I want the crisp, car uh, sharp edges and stuff. By turning the canvas, it allows me to have a better feeling on the paint. If these little lines occur, that's okay. Let them be when it's water. If you get lines in water, totally fine. Let it happen. Okay, so let's make sure this is here. That's going to be part of the leg. Um, he gave me this image, and like, I've seen it a million times. It's a really good photo of him. He looks great in this one. But um, I was a little scared when he gave it to me because... I don't understand what the hands are doing. That was, I was kind of like, hmm, because it's like in the photo, they're hidden by the shirt. So, and then I thought about it. Ah, he's cleaning his goggles or his glasses. So I'm like, yeah, that's what that is. Probably their glasses. So he was just wiping them off. So that makes sense because I do that a lot on the boat too. I love to, me and him, we love to scuba dive. We, uh, he, was in, he lived in Veracruz for a long time, and I went to a school kind of with him. He graduated right before I did, but we uh, scuba dived a lot together. He's my little buddy! Little buddy! Okay. Oh, coming up here soon, I'm painting another one. My mom sent me today. It's a beautiful photo. I think she took it for me to paint. Uh, but it's her in a cute little hat from, like, the 1920s. And uh, she's looking into the mirror. So it's a reflection of her face. So I, I'm going to be doing that here pretty soon. It's pretty cool. I'm excited. And it's going to be a simple one. So if uh, you've been following me and you've been painting along, this one's going to be a cool one. Um, uh, she is Caucasian, so and it is her birthday today. So um, I'm going to film that video right after I do this video. Um, but... Uh, that one is definitely going to be, uh, I'm going to say it's going to, I'm going to make it, uh, a hard intermediate, but I'm still going to keep it easy because the photo itself is there's a mirror on the wall and, uh, it's, you know, it's honestly any of the paintings I do, if you're following along painting with me, you can dumb down everything, not to say that you're dumbing it down because you're stupid, but it's more, you can make these easier on yourself. Like if you notice right now, I'm color blocking in the, the water. I mean, I could, if um, I was a newer painter, I could stop at this. If that's the look I'm going for, I'm going to 
put some waves in there and stuff, but like uh, this, it, it'll totally work out. So really, you just have to block it out. And that goes the same idea when you're not that good of a drawer, but you kind of need to draw something, just block it out, honestly. And sometimes less is more. Ooh, actually there's some skin. I shouldn't have painted that. Okay, this is great. Loving it, I like it. Okay, so washing out my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick little dry before I do the waves. I recommend you do the same. really nice now it's not completely dry and it's a little uh, sticky that's kind of okay a little bit because we're gonna be covering it up now in the event of I paint something and I have a boo-boo the drier the paint is underneath the better it's gonna be for when you have to wipe it up and try to clear out that paint if you want to go really fast to erase paint um, so it is the drier it is the better let's just hope we don't have any boobies I don't want this video to be an insane amount of hours. Okay, I'm going to take my little guy brush. Can you see him? He's a cute brush, isn't he? I'm going to go with some black. And I'm going to go ahead and do the horizon before I do the water. I might have to touch up the horizon again. But this is just going to help give me perspective. So I'm going to do a little line. The smaller, prettier, skinnier, pointier brush you have, the easier this is going to be. So, um, I do spend a little extra money and buy really nice little brushes. Um, I try to get them like on clearance and on sale for like $2 each. Um, I live in a town where the cost of living is very uh, minimal. And so because of that, my art supplies at the local chain store that y'all know that we shop at, uh, our prices are not as bad here, actually. Like, I was in New York, and I was like, what? In Manhattan. I was like, there's no way. I was all annoyed. Um, I thought going into the city, the prices would have been cheaper, maybe, because, like, there's the port in Manhattan. But no, nope, that was not the case. Um... I do buy my, my art supplies in bulk because I am doing this painting challenge, which I recommend if you're serious and actually doing this with me, please do that. Um, I'm trying to, you know, minimize the cost and everything. So, yep. So, um, I am trying to be able to go live so that way you guys can talk to me and we can, you can, I can answer your questions. The problem I'm having is that YouTube has a lot of hard barriers of entry, meaning it's very difficult to get enough points in the sense of subscribers and view counts and watch time hours and is it, you know, I'm starting out here. I'm very new. So because of that, they won't allow me the feature to go live. In the past they did and then I didn't have enough subscribers because I was only like posting one video every three months. So I just wasn't getting the view count. And I started getting serious now. Um, so if you haven't, I please subscribe to my channel. So that way YouTube will allow me to have, I meet the requirements and the minimum to be able to go live so I can answer your questions. So please subscribe. 
Um, it'll help you find my videos easier too. Um, the goal is, and I really am doing this, um, I'm painting one a day. Today I have the opportunity to um, not really have to worry about life for the minute moment. So I'm going to take the opportunity and paint two videos just because I'm really into both of these photos. This one is going way faster than I thought it was. I thought this was going to be like a whole to do and it's actually not. I'm painting little buildings. Now, in the photo, there's a bunch of little buildings here. But then when I was drawing it, I kind of felt like they were like, like he was going to eat them. So I decided to no. Uh, this is the shoreline of Cancun. I'm almost completely positive that this is Cancun. He goes there all the time for vacation. He does like a thing where he takes out the kids from the university and he's like the chaperone. So like the college kids from the United States and they go down there and, and he's got to be the parrot for the party. Um, but it, but he gets perks as in they pay for his flight and all that stuff to go. So it's kind of a win-win. Now here's a point where you can make these buildings, um, pretty much any way you want. I, it really just guess or you can actually be super super accurate um, I would recommend when you do buildings nobody thinks about this but let me tell you it's a thing so like I have one long one here and I made a little one it would not be a good idea for me to make another little guy right here because I'm sure you know what that looks like and people you know the eye fills in stuff and and then you're like, you're known as the lady that did that. <laughs> so I'd recommend no. There's always some stupid teenage boy that's going to giggle. Um, and, you know, grown-ups are going to, they won't say anything. But, you know, they're seeing it. Everybody knows it. So be careful when it comes to buildings. I do, I am trying to keep them very straight. Um, I think I'm just going to, this photo that I'm looking at, it's on another cell phone I'm staring at. Uh I don't know if you can see that. That's what I'm looking at right there. That's the photo. Um, yeah, we still could add the sun. We're going to probably, we'll do that at the very end. Um, and also, because like in Mexico, the boys wear their shorts really short, like girls do. And I don't like that. So I'm going to not and make it a little bit longer. Um... Well, I have black right now. I could work on the hair a little bit for the time being because I have black already. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to be staring at this and uh, yeah, let's do the hair. Hair is very simple. I'm still in the same brush. Um, I want to make sure I'm going to go out here and to help me so that I can see my outline that I made a little bit better. I'm going to trace the outline so I have a basic idea to where I'm going. Now his hair is a little longer. He still, he has the haircut where it's like it's buzzed really short and then it looks like in this pit photo it's been a while since he went and got it taken care of so it's kind of long. Ugh, the ear. Go down here. Oh, it's gonna be skin. There we go. So I have a basic outline just of where all this is going. He has a little bit of a widow's peak, not much. Oh, and it comes down. It goes sideways and then it comes down again. There we go. Love it. Looks like a helmet. Tony, you're wearing a helmet. Now he does have right here, he's got a little line. So I'm going to try to, well, this is where his part is there. I'm just going to leave that there to remind me to fill it in. Okay, so now, of course, these hairs are going to come down. And really, honestly, let's just fill it in. Uh, now, when it comes to like... Ah oh no! Oh no! Party fell, people! Party fell! Do you see what just happened? This is what I meant about drawing. Make sure that you dry your stuff and then you can come back. And if you're quick enough, which I wasn't, you can race. But the problem was, since I didn't dry the sky a whole lot, oh, it's okay. We'll put another building in its place. But because I didn't dry, 
uh, I didn't dry it completely all the way. You can see how when I added water, it pulled up paint. When it's dried all the way completely, it's not going to do that uh, when you have to go and erase. Um, I'd have to say I erase about two to three times per painting that I do. Okay, so wash my brush. I'm going to wipe it out with my rag, get a nice little pretty point. Yep, very pretty. Go into my black a little bit. Now notice when I do the black, do you see right here what's go? Oh, let me see, where can I put it? Right there. I don't, I only put black halfway. There's only black to there. I didn't go all the way and get it all up in here. I don't need it in there. And then I didn't need it all the way there. And this will allow me to be able to bend and make skinny lines. For example, bending all the way. Ooh, that's a big one. But then if I bend just a little, it's smaller. Do you get that? But when I bend all the way, it's only where the black paint was on the bristles. Do you see that? The black paint isn't going any further. It's more controlled. When you just put the paint on the tip of the brush, it's controlled. I'm just going to go ahead and fill all this in. Now, because it's a bigger space, I can go with um, a bigger brush and do all this if I want to. But whatever, it's not that huge of a space. Now, if it was blonde, see how when I was doing these little, those little question marks? That's what I do if it's blonde or brown hair. Um, we are on the, he is closer to the side of the boat. So, okay, water's bouncing, the light bounces off the water. But we still want to have shadows just to, I mean, they're going to be very minimal uh, because you're on water, but then it's like they're still, they help us see. And the other thing too is I want to show that this is a painting. I don't want to show that it's a photograph. I mean, he really likes this photo, so it's all over his social media, so it's everywhere. So I'm trying to be a little different here on purpose. And I think that's also one of the things like, Brides, when they get married, will give me their, uh, like, a wedding photo of them up in the altar with their dress on and stuff like that. And it's, yeah, they have a photo. They can frame it and put it in their living room. Uh, but the painting just, I don't know, gives it a little vintage kind of, oh, look at how cool, extra little look to it. Okay, so I'm not done with the hair, but I'm going to let that rest and be where it's at. I'm super upset that I made this problems so I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll put in another building so these are like sky rises that are up against the beach and really what it's telling me is that you're not obviously there's a million little buildings everywhere right there would be a ton of them but what this is telling me is that we are so far away from the beach that all we're seeing is the, 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 really, the tall, tall buildings. All the other stuff is kind of just blended into the, the coastline and the ground itself. Okay, so while I have that, let's go ahead and I'm going to change brushes. I'm going to go back to my original. Wash it good. Dry it out with my rag. Make sure it's dry. So we're back to this little guy. Um, I'm going to add some turquoise, which probably I should have already. I don't know. Each painting's different. Everybody has his own life. going to go here in the turquoise, and I'm going to make, uh, let's see, let's, let's reference our photo one more time. There is no turquoise in the water, but... I'm going to add it as though it's highlights. So let's see. They seem to match the coastline. The lines themselves of the painting match the coastline. So I'm going to go ahead and put these dots in. Um, now I have my brush and it's going sideways. They're little dots. It's a whole bunch of them. The more you put of these things and the more that you layer on top, the cooler this water is going to appear and the more it's going to be wow. At first, it looks hideous. I know. I get it. This painting isn't looking like what? Uh, but it will happen. 
it's you have to be patient and then it just comes together and it'll look great but it does take a little minute to get there now I don't want to cover up all of the dark blue I want to leave it and notice how I'm not going back and forth I'm just doing a one and done one and done one and done and just leave it uh, let these things dry and go to another area of the canvas I'm going to continue going with the coastline and trying to keep it crooked keeping it crooked and get some around the edges so it looks like it's coming around that works get some over here that look like they're coming around the edges Perfect. Let's go ahead while we're letting that dry. Come over here. And do the same. Now these ones can be a little crooked, not as much, I guess. No, I guess the same degree, really. Yeah, same degree. Yeah, that looks good. You know what happened? I went straight down with this black line instead of going at an angle. That's what happened. Party fell. I didn't go at an angle. Okay, now there's going to be, he's going to have some skin there. So we'll say that's the last little dot. He's going to have some pumpies right there. Okay, that's cool. Don't want to overdo it. Okay, love it. Great, wonderful. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna add some white. I'm gonna put it right here. So see what I got? Now have you noticed that I'm not like all over my palette? I'm not like I'm reserving space and area so I can put down more colors. Um, it's gonna really help you if you're kind of strategic with where you put your paint. Gonna mix these two together and lighten up the turquoise. Now this is hyper realism, right? So I'm going to give it some highlights because I want this to kind of, yeah, the photo's there. And the photo didn't have flash and the sun was going down and all that. But if I was really there staring at this, did you check it? Yep, different color. Um, if I was there staring at this, then what's going to happen is, uh, like if I was there in on the scene, my... My vision would, I'd have better vision. I would see better and clearer and brighter. Everything would be brighter. I mean, obviously he's taken off his glasses, right? To wipe them. So it's pretty bright. It's just the camera wasn't picking up on it. Which is also why it's a good idea if you have the opportunity, which would be very difficult, but I have actually done it before, taking canvas and painting on a boat. Now when I painted on a boat, it was a big old cruise ship. So it was moving, but it wasn't like, ah, like he's on a little speedboat right here, which you could. I mean, it's, I'm sure there have been people that have done it. Um, but boy, stuff's everywhere. So they almost look like little fishes kind of, which they could be. The eye could be like, oh yeah, no, there's some fishes. Did you see the fishes? This is almost like making a dough kind of. Like, you know how, like, sometimes they give you a recipe and then they just sugar, salt, water, you know, flour. They're not like, like when my, I was a really little kid and my grandma explained it to me how to make lemonade. She just goes, sugar, water, lemon, you know? So that's kind of what we're doing here with this paint. We're just letting it be and that's a lot of times with skin too when we get over to the skin everybody stresses out and freaks out and it's like a whole to do and all this stuff right but we're getting our heads I mean really like I was at the university and they're trying to explain this stuff to me didn't get it and then my teacher said just do it and then after just doing it yeah no it worked it just you just do it <laughs> and just the act of doing it you, you learn. It's almost like you're kind of just teach yourself by sitting quiet. Like how we read. You just, there's no way that you can really just read. You just have to sit and take the time and read. 
Okay, so that's good. Let's see what happens if we add a tiny bit of black to this turquoise right here. It's gray, 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 dark. Darkity dark, dark, dark. I'm just going to add a hint. Now what this dark turquoise is going to be, which is really a gray turquoise, what this is, make sure that your paintbrush is beautiful and pointy. It's going to be like the shadows in the wave. So like we have the highlights and we have the low lights. Another thing that really helps when you're painting, if you have the opportunity to do it, is to learn about applying makeup but applying makeup how they do it for stage and for theater. Um, it's a lot of the same science, a lot of the same ideas. Like I painted this girl on the beach the other day, very cute. And when I was painting her face, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, it's makeup. And I was kind of applying makeup, like foundations and blush and lipstick. And that's just how it feels. It's a lot of the same science. Um, and that's kind of what's going on here with water a little bit too, is the highlights and the shadows because the wave's going to come up, it's going to go down. Also with painting too, you add colors sometimes that you think aren't there, but yeah, trust me, they're there. So if you have the opportunity, uh, go outside and look at the clouds and you'll see that there's like purples, oranges, like it's not like we're all kids here and a cloud is white. No, there's... A lot of different colors and that's how it is with water pretty much anything um, now I have had people say well black you can't it's not like you shouldn't paint with it whatever you know whatever on that I, I'm this is impressionism I'm not trying to make a photograph and you know they're they're saying well you're just not in nature and it's like well yeah actually for me it is in nature um, if the Sun is going to be hitting you at um like okay so you have your subject and you're staring at it and the sun is uh behind so for example if you are on the beach and you are staring at a boat and you got some fishermen out there on a boat and the sun is setting but you are on the west coast so you the sun is setting on the other side of them so you're looking out towards the sunset now what you're going to see is you're going to see them and they're going to appear to be black. Now you can do this whole dark purple blue situation, gray tones. Yeah, you can do that. That's great. That's wonderful. But if you don't have amazing, awesome eyesight black, especially if you're a beginner painter, black works just fine. Go ahead and use it. I use black all the time. I mean, for example, my hair is quite dark and my eyes are actually very dark. The centers of my eyes are extremely dark. Um, I have Mexican heritage ancestry, so I have the, you know, I mean, olive skin here. Uh, I think we're, I'm descendant of Spaniards, but I have, you know, the, the pupils of my hair are like black. Um, so yeah, I'm totally cool with using it because I'm nature. Okay. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give this a dry. The reason why is because do you see the lines? of paint that are kind of bubbly yeah I'm gonna let those dry because I don't want to be smearing anything at all so go ahead and if it's been a while and you haven't dried your paint go ahead and do that
So it's not completely all the way dry, but it'll do. Hopefully I don't have to erase anything, which really I'm not. I'm just going to let it be. If anything needs erased is what it is. I almost am on purpose trying to find blemishes on purpose. Now I'm going to go back in here and add some blue. Now notice I'm not going back and forth, back and forth. I'm just doing, I'm doing dashes. All I'm doing is lines and dashes. Trying to make sure I keep on the same angle. Just lots of lines and dashes everywhere. The more you dash, the more cooler this water is going to be. You just need to be patient. There is a fine line of when to know when to stop. Uh, when you start getting moody. Honestly, that's how I know when I start almost almost hating my painting where I'm like ooh and you just feel it and you're tired and you're exhausted and you're just no more that's when you stop you can revisit it another day but some people a lot of my students have actually had this issue where they've told me about that yeah when to stop and then if you go too far you can make the thing appear ugly I've done that a lot especially my early days of painting I would I did that quite frequently um Sometimes you gotta let it be. I mean, not every painting you do is gonna be amazing. There you are gonna have duds. I mean, I still to this day, after all these years, every once in a while still have a dud. But you know what? That's okay. Because if you have a dud, that's fine. Just sell it. Give it away. I meant to do that. You know? Um, I am to the level now that I... Um, I do just sell my paintings uh, if I don't like them. I keep all the stuff that I like that I think I did wow on. And that's like, I charge more money for those paintings. But if it's a dud, those paintings get sold for 10 bucks. <laughs> they get sold for just like, here, take it. So I can recoup some of my, my money on art supplies. Just at least so I have something, you know. Um, it's hard to price art, it really is. Um, I, because I live in a location in which, um, the cost of living is like, I, I'm, I'm telling you what, in my adult life, this is out of every place in the United States I've lived at, this is like the cheapest area I've ever lived in. The, the, um, average price for houses are, for example, we bought my house, my house was bought on, uh, $16,000 at a tax sale. Um, the, the previous tenants had passed away. And uh, they didn't have children, so it really didn't go anywhere. And the bank took it, and we paid it, and yeah, it was like a whole to-do. Um, but anyways, uh, I think like out of the peoples that I know, like I think nobody has bought in a house around here for more than like 200000 I think that's like the extreme high of the housing. So it's a, that's one of the reasons I do live here, very cheap. Um, but because of that, I have to take that into consideration if I'm doing like a showing at the art gallery or cause like literally the art gallery, that's how small my town is. There's, we have in the city limits, there's about 4,000, 40,000 people. And then, which isn't really that small. There's places in Nebraska way smaller, um, in other parts of the country. Um, but, uh, I, it's really the surroundings. Now, I have sold paintings in Key West and it's great down there because you get a lot of people from Miami. So I've noticed that in when I was selling to people there, because you know you talk to them and all that and whatnot. And uh, I've noticed a lot of people in like Key West are people that came from Miami. So it's either they're coming in for the weekend or they have money that they can vacation and travel, but they're not really the wealthiest people that can afford to just fly from New York to Hawaii for a week. There, It's more economical to go down to Key West. So, but I do have a bigger clientele and more shuffling of people because a lot of people come to the island. So I found it that it was easier to have that cycle that I, a lot more people were looking, um, which is odd because, I mean, I do when I go on vacation. I like to check out art and stuff too, but I have a, a daughter, so it's more we're doing kid stuff. And uh, we go swimming and you know, snorkeling and we do all those kinds of things when I'm on vacation. 
Um, but I do try to when it's just me and like and my husband. We try to go out and see art galleries and fun stuff, but not top priority. So when you try to sell in that type of environment, you have to be very quick. Yeah, I mean these people, you get them. You get them in the gallery for maybe five minutes for your spiel. So it's got to be a fast one. I'm staying with the same brush and I'm going to make a lighter blue. I'm going to start color blocking, meaning I, well, okay, I was in Cancun and um, the way the hotel was really cool. It, um, it had like, um, I had a bunch of stairs outside the room and I wasn't really happy. I didn't want to use the, the um, elevator. <laughs> because um, it broke down <laughs> like right as I was like there there was like a per guy trying to open the door and everything and so it kind of just scared me that I didn't want to trust the, ele the, the elevators in that particular hotel and it, they they built their building that was five stories tall and they made it kind of like a, um, what do they call that like a motel that you can kind of drive up to it and they were like little houses but like in a building kind of and so um it was on the beach and so as i'm climbing these stairs the way in which the stairs were and how they did it you had amazing views as you were climbing the stairs the way in which it was you could see out with the half walls and i started noticing that it kind of took my breath away i mean the view was amazing um, but I started noticing that there were strips of areas of like lines. So the water had blues, greens, like all the different shades in that demographic. And they were kind of, they were kind of like strips of line. So I'm going to do that in my painting. Uh, let's make sure that I have all these. I'm going to continue to keep lining and doing all these bumps but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start focusing my lines so that I have uh so that I have areas in which are lighter areas that are darker so now I have a gist of the basic don't know if I paint it over here it's a little, almost dry brushing I don't want to do that I'm going to put a little bit more paint okay so I got all my dots they're looking very dotty right that's what I want, but I'm going to try to strip it out now. So I'm going to try to make the first stripe at the top, at the bottom of my horizon. I'm going to try to make the, that area a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in with my paint with the dark blue and I'm going to try to just be a little bit more, just a little bit more. Which, yes, I am painting over and covering up and stuff like that. It's going to happen. It's going to be like kneading dough. You know, there's a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of flour at a time, and eventually it's going to come. It's going to happen. So I've got this area. And since they're kind of angled, I am going to angle a little bit so down here is going to be a little bit more darker than it would be up here like up here dark areas is probably only going to go that far so just to finish that off this area is just a little bit dark but it doesn't it's not going to go down that far it's just going to go down a little bit and then so right here i'm going to make this line almost not really a line just a dotted line so you can see how i'm really starting to build that in as a darker area And kind of come over here and make lots of dark areas. 
the more you touch this up, the, more, the cooler the water is going to be. So if you're going for a very loose effect and you want very impressionistic, modern-y style, then I would suggest stopping there and just a lot before I start color blocking all this off and just kind of let it be. Okay, so now we're going to make another strip and it's going to be more turquoise. Go ahead, wash my brush. Oops, I ran out of turquoise. I'm going to give myself some fresh turquoise. Notice where I put the turquoise. I kind of kept it by the wall, the blue, the dark blue. I'm keeping everything sort of together so I can mix. There is a way about doing it. You don't have to do it like I do. Um, but this is just how after working and working, working, working with paints, this is how I figured it out. Which honestly, going to college for art is fun. It's great. But... I feel like even when I was there, I felt like I was still internally just doing this. They were forcing me to practice. So maybe I could have skipped the tuition and just practice. It was nice to have professors, but when you're at the university, they're not like, like this with the video with you. They're like, okay, here's an apple, paint the apple. I mean, some are. I did have a couple that sat with me and took the time, but for the most part, you're, I felt as though at the university I was a number. There were 20 other kids in the class, and um, yeah, so you just have to take the time and do it. One thing that I did think was amazing at the university is they allowed me the time to uh, have, well, it was almost an icebreaker for me a little bit that uh, having a live subject and a live model, um, they kind of made that happen. So I was able to practice doing that. Uh, having a live model is good. Um, now with my art studio, I do have live models. And now that I'm on the business end of everything and the teacher, I can kind of see that it's cost money. <laughs> Um, which, you know, you can give people what they paid for, right? But, you know, I, I need to be able to pay the rent of my studio and all sorts of stuff, too. So, um, I recommend if you're going to go that route, practice first a lot with photographs. Practice looking at your own hands and painting your own hands. Um, practice painting your puppy. Um, do, like, a lot of little things. And then when you feel that you're quite confident, then go ahead and spend the money and actually go and, you know, have a model. Um, it's also more comfortable if you kind of know what you're doing. Because in the models, they get, you know, it's weird. It's like, oh, you're just being a creeper. Now, a little bit of turquoise can come up to the blue. Not a lot. Just a little for little highlights is okay. Tiny little dabs here and there. But not, nothing huge. Just to break up if there's too dark of spots. But see how I lightly did it? Okay, um, so now let's see with this one. We could go all crazy and add purple. Wouldn't that be fun? A little purple. Let's reference our photo again. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hmm. You don't see the strips in color in this photo because it is super, super, super dull. Um... But they they they're, they're there in life. You you there it's in when you're there in life, yeah. Because there's a lot of gray tones in this photo, and I really want it, I want this to be bright. You can see that the waves get bigger towards the front and smaller in the back. That's something we haven't been working on. So let's go ahead and do that. Our dashes up here are going to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead make our dashes and be mindful that I'm making them bigger. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to keep the turquoise. I'm going to go into some blue. And I'm going to make another little strip of blue over here. And I'm going to make sure that instead of just dotting, I'm going to be sliding a little bit more to make my waves a tiny bit to appear as though they're a little bigger. I don't know if you heard that on the camera that somebody set off a firework in my neighborhood. We get a lot of fireworks. It's like a thing. 
It's always something to celebrate. Or it just kids. I think it's just kids. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm going to make sure I get some here. Make sure that they're longer. Yep, it's a little longer. Now, this almost in a way can fool the eye where you would think maybe a fish was jumping out. I'm going to make some dark ones over here. Oh, I hated what I just did. I covered up a lot of work. I noticed I wasn't going sideways. And then I started going a little too sideways. I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. I'm going to revisit that. Okay. So this is good. Like it. So I'm going to do one more pass. And I think I might call it. So I'm going to go with my lighter blue now. And I'm going to go back over. So notice how we're making sh lines. And I want little, 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 little dots. Little. So basically I'm just not even swooshing. I'm just dotting at this point. And have some crossover, just a little bit of crossover, not much. Little dots. And while I have this color on my brush, I'm going to go ahead and do the other dark blue that's down here. Keeping in mind to make the waves just a little bit longer. A little bit more of a swoosh. Swoosh! Lots of swooshes. I mean, honestly... Okay, so there's this lady, and I totally love her painting. She's wonderful. Her name is Donna Dilberry. Great, amazing. I've watched a lot of her videos. Um... Okay, so I love her. She's great. I love you, Donna. The one critique I have, and I say this in a way of loving nature, is that it's just, sometimes it feels very complicated, but when I started to really understand your technique that you were teaching, I came to this conclusion, it's a series of swooshes. It's just in the direction of which you swoosh. And... It's really helped me a lot. Once I started coming to that realization that it's just a series of swooshes, it made it not as intimidating because I'm sure you've seen her work. Her work is like, oh, this is really good what she does. She's a really talented lady. Um, but Donna, if you're listening, if you just say it's a series of swooshes, it takes the anxiety out because I get a lot of anxiety when I watch your videos. I do. I get like, I can't, it's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> What you do, it's awesome. I admire it. Um, also, too, yeah, if don't just take my word for it. You know, watch other videos, like take classes, go to paint painting with a twist, do stuff. Everybody's got different little ways that they do things, and and you kind of just a con like put it all together. You know, like Bob Ross got some really cool stuff. He does. But after you've painted about 20 of them, you start noticing that they're kind of the same <laughs> a little bit. Like they're, after a while, it is a mountain is what a mountain is, right? Um, yeah. So you need lots of different perspectives of people to talk to, different ideas, and come up with your own style. This is my style. This is my handwriting. This is how I hold the brush. Um, I will never be able to paint in the way that Don, Donna Dewberry does because that's her handwriting. As much as I wish I could mimic it, no, I want to be my own artist and have my own little twist on things and my own voice. And so I take her lessons and her ideas and I apply it to what I'm already doing. And my flowers don't come out carbon copies. They kind of come out pretty close. Um, but I still, I think when I do it, she blends a little bit more than I do because she's done it a million times, but, and I haven't really, um, I'm lightening up right now, uh, the turquoise, um, the more that I paint certain things, the better I'm getting, uh, sometimes I have the duds in the sense that I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm just doing it to get it over with, to make a painting so I can sell it at the fair. Um, I noticed those are wastes of my time and those paintings suck. 
I'm going to go over this little strip of water here, lighten it up. Make sure I gotta remember to keep them little. It's okay to have one big one every once in a while. That's fine. Um, also what I've noticed actually, uh, so for my anniversary, my husband and I went on a cruise and we started in, oh, um, Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We started in Baltimore and then we went all the way to Neves and St. Kitts. It was beautiful. And it was like two days journey to get down there. And one of the things, now obviously I'm an artist, you pay attention. As you paint, you start paying attention to things that you never used to pay attention to before. I'm going to go down here a little bit, put a couple of just little highlights. Little highlights are okay if they're done in sparing ways. Okay, so I uh, started noticing that the water was kind of green when I was closer to New York. Uh, well, it's almost, it was kind of like black. And then North, the Carolinas, it got green. And then as we were traveling south on the boat, it took us two days to get down to the Bahamas. Um, I started noticing that the water lightened up and it turned into lighter blues, the palette. Um, I did, I asked, I don't remember who I asked. I asked somebody and they explained it. What happens is that the, the seaweed and the stuff that's underneath the water is certain colors. The seaweed is darker in New York. I mean, yeah, the water is dirtier, but it's also the plant life and the vegetation is a little darker when you go north. Um, so yeah, if you are going to paint something, uh, like this was a whim. Okay. I just got this. He sent this picture to me last night. So I'm like, okay. But like when you have a chance or like if let's say somebody's dri driving and you're just sitting there, take a moment and look out the window, but like try to like look up. Like if you have like, you know, look forward and up so you can see the sky and take a moment, you know, like I have a mountain really close to my house. And there's a, there is a road that's about two miles long that kind of goes down a hill a little bit. And it's an amazing view of that mountain. Really nice little pretty ride. It's a really quick little ride. There are houses and building, well, houses in the way and some trees. But there's some really good view areas. So when my husband's driving, I have found where I take a moment and I'm actually seeing it. Like I'm looking at it. And I see how it changes throughout the year. And different vibes and it's just cool do that for yourself because you're really going to become a better painter if you do that um okay so i'm liking the water it's good i might touch it up in a little bit you can always come back and i always keep it open for myself i'm liking it it's working so let's see i rec you can do this however you want there's many different schools of thought the way that i have found that works the best for me is if I start with the skin first and then I move on to the clothing. Now this is kind of a weird thought. Nobody really thinks about this. In my opinion, I feel as though the um I feel as though clothing is a little bit harder to paint than skin. Because it's got all those folds and the shadows within the folds and many different fat uh um fabrics to work with. So I'm going to turn my palette and go to the other side since I'm going to be working in the browns. I have a dark brown. I also have a light brown, which I use more of actually. I do like my, and then I also am going to put on some white. Now my cousin, we have hereditary that is Spaniard um, on one side and then the other side of our, our heritage is German and they ended up immigrating from Nor uh, not Norway, uh, the Netherlands, went to Germany, then to Mexico and then on the other side, the grandma side, we have, um, we uh, I'm talking great grandparents here, we have Spaniard side that came conquistadors to Mexico. So because of that, we're kind of like, I don't sunburn. It's very hard for me to get a sunburn. I have to like work at it. Not that I do, but I, I'm pretty, so I have olive skin tone and he does too. 
Now the photo reference I'm using, he's uh, pretty dark because there's a lot of gray tones in this image. Okay, right there. You can tell that his legs are like super hairy, which Tona, ew man, like ew, okay, just shave it. Do some manscaping. <laughs> so, but his legs, which oftentimes in men, typically tend to be lighter than the face and the hands and the arms. So you got to you think about those ideas. Um, so we're, we can start with the hardest first or the easiest. To help you guys to feel better and easier, let's start with the easiest one. And then we'll work our, we'll work here, here, here. And we'll do the face last. So that way you have more practice with shading. So there is the knee. It's a little bit light. Now the sun in this image is meow-ish right here. Ooh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to paint the railing, which we should do that. We should do that, totally. I still have a line, you can see it. Which I guess we could, you know what? This, what I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint the line. And by doing that, I'm going to show you the process of shading, which is going to be the exact same science we're going to use for skin. It's going to be the same deal. So, let's go. I just hope my line is straight, really. I should dry this. It's pretty dry. Okay, so a little bit of black with a lot of white makes gray. Okay, black is a very powerful color. I'm going to start with a dark gray first and do a foundation and then I'm going to do the highlights. I'm using my skinny pretty little tiny brush to do this line. Now if my canvas was bigger, like this is an 8x10, so my canvas, oh I'm going to leave that there. If my canvas was bigger then I would, um, I'm sorry, if you can hear that in the background of the video, I have a parrot. And then I have this like white bird. It's not really mine. It's my husband's, and uh, they they're making a lot of noise. There's, I think they hear me, and they're saying, "Come play with me." I already played with them today, so if it's picking up on the radio on the video, that's what it is. It's the birdies. There they have their own little room over there that they hang out in with their cages, but it's like open, so they have their cages and they have their setup and their little house, but it's a room. So they can just kind of hang out and do their own little thing. Okay, so I'm going to, this line is going to freak me out. Ooh. Now this line in my image here, if you notice, there's a letter A. So this line is going to kind of come up. And we want that. So I'm going to just guess it. Ah! It's not going to be a big A. It's going to be, but it's. Okay, that works. Sometimes you just have to be brave, and that's what we're doing. We're just being brave. Also, when you put things, I'm going to go ahead and turn this to make it easier so I'm not contorting my body or my hand to make sure that when I paint my line that I do a better job painting my line. When you layer things, they become a little bit more realistic looking for example flowers in a vase they're not just all going to be two-dimensional they're three-dimensional there's going to be some flowers that are kind of in front of other flowers see how the water just starts appearing more watery especially when you do something that cuts through like right here i'm cutting through some of the lines of the water it just gives it that more of a pop of real. I was really scared when he gave me this painting because I, you know, even after all these years of art, I still have moments where I second guess myself. And I was a little nervous. I was like, I can't paint that. It happens to me literally every time. <laughs> every time. I still have uh, moments. Okay, remember to not make this super straight. So it's almost going across from what the way the waves, different angle. 
by not doing this straight across on the painting, it'll appear to be that the boat is having movement. So we're going to get some movement. I'm liking it. It's working. It's coming. Okay. It needs to dry for a little bit, but what I'm going to do is I have that color. I need to make a little bit more of that color. And I'm going to see it. I have more of that color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten up the color even more. And I'm going to use it as the light is bouncing off. Now light is everywhere right now in this painting. It's all over the place. Make sure we got a good quantity. I don't need a whole lot. But I don't want white. Okay, so I'm going to wipe some of this gray off of the brush. Get it off of the brush. Now I'm going to dab it back in so I have a nice little clump. I have a beautiful little clump. This is what makes line. If you do this method by cleaning off your brush and applying fresh paint on, at the tip, your lines will be that much more crisp. So I'm going to put the highlight on the bottom because it's going to be the light bouncing up from the water, even though that our sun is up high. So I'm going to start here. And it can be very sporadic. Or it can be the whole thing touching. It's up to you and how you want to paint it. The one thing you should try to make sure that you do is make sure that your pipe is the same width throughout the, 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 the entirety of it. Because in nature, or well, on the boat it would be. I also was going to edit this photo a lot and maybe I thought about taking out the and just having like a headshot. I thought that would be fun too, but I felt but then after I thought about it and slept on it, then I was like, what well, does it really tell the story? In this photo, I think why it's so special to him is because it is a story. It's a photo of an awesome day that he had on the boat. Probably was drinking, having a good time. Because he's young. You're not supposed to drink when you scuba dive. It's, they say it affects the air bubbles inside of you and everything, but I'm sure he was. Pick one side. I'm going to pick this side because this side is going to be more angled towards the bottom. There we go. Here over there. Okay, so I'm going to go one more time and just make sure that I've got this pretty nice and straight with my edges. So, um... If you are selling art online, uh, this is going to cost me, because he's in college right now, and it's about a 16-hour drive from here. Uh, so, well, actually, he graduated. Oh, my goodness, Tony, you graduated. He's just hanging out for a while. He just barely graduated. Um, so, uh, to box it, I put it in a box. And then I put a uh, poppy bubble wrap stuff on the bottom of it to really secure it and make it flat. Um, it typically, the going rate for this, for the post office right now, is around $8 anywhere in the United States for the weight. Um, so it's pretty not that, it's not that bad. I do recommend if you are shipping, I recommend, uh, sorry, just want to make sure I got that. Um, using boxes versus the back method. Um, I mean, that's a no-brainer right there. I'm going to wash this brush off a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do one more touch-up right here with the um, dark gray, which I don't have. I'm going to make a little bit of. This gray is going to come in handy in a little bit when, when we go to do the clothes. Now, I could done this one before. I mean, it's weird because he's my cousin. 
but it has happened to me where I just decided to go ahead and make them naked. Um, this, the reason is for that is because honestly doing skin, you, the light bound doesn't, I got to touch that up with a highlight. Um, when you do that, you're dealing with less lights bouncing everywhere. Um, it's not to be weird. It's more of a just, you know, if it, it crutches, you know, if you, it's like a crutch. Sometimes it's okay to use crutches. Like right now, if you needed to use a ruler, go ahead, whatever, you know, just use what you need and you know, it's our secret. Nobody needs to know that you used a crutch to paint this amazing painting. I use crutches all the time when I'm painting. I use shortcuts and I dumbed a lot of things down for me. Um, yeah. Looks good. I'm liking it. Now, I am fussing a little bit more because I do want this to be something that when I give it to him that he's going to be like, Oh! Wow! So, yeah. I'm trying to make this so it's a keeper painting. It's going to be in the keep pile. Okay. I'm going to go one more pass with the gray and then I'm going to call it quits. It's overworking this too much. The reason why is I got that too gray there. So I have to put the light gray on my brush anyways. Might as well just touch her up. Just a little bit. It does happen to me sometimes that I'll put a canvas on the wall. And then later I'll be like, what was I thinking? And then I'll go fix stuff. That happens too. Even when I'm painting, like the beginning of the painting, I said we can redo the sky again. We'll see how everything else goes. and Which really, honestly, if you're going to do the sky, you should just do the sky. I mean, just get her done kind of situation. Okay, I'm going to give this a little highlight because it went, oh! You know what? It's okay for the bar over here to be a tiny bit thicker because it is closer to us. So that's okay. Okay, that's it. Stop fussing. See, you gotta tell yourself no! When you start getting stressed out, that's when you tell yourself no and you stop. Okay, um, now let's go ahead and do the skin. We're gonna start with this one to make it simple and easy so we can have some practice before we get into the hard area. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, and this is my base color. Skin has many colors in it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get this down. This is not what he looks like. He's not this dark. He's a white guy. Um, but having a base color is just going to help in general for everything. Kind of lost the leg there a little bit. Also with dry brushing, when you do that, which sometimes I actually do dry brush on skin a little bit, it's good to have a base tone coming through. It's also a good idea to do for sheer fabrics. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm going to try to make sure his shorts are not European shorts because this kid wears like shorts that were cool in the United States in the 1970s and 80s. He's totally into that fashion. And like, I'm a 90s kid. So like, ew. <laughs> no, but really. Um, now, when it comes to hair on skin, I am kind of cartooning this painting a little bit. So because I'm cartooning it a little bit, I really don't need those details. Now, if I was trying to do um, realistic and not be so impressionistic, then... Yeah, I think you should add all that, but this is the smallest brush I have at the moment. So, I don't want to do all those details. And, you know, are you going to really paint every single hair? Like, if you were using this brush and your canvas was huge, like several feet, 
then, you know, yeah. But it takes a while, and I'm trying to paint two paintings today. So you want to put love, but at some point you got to know when you're going to go crazy. It has happened to me where I've gone crazy on a few paintings and you hate them and then you're just embarrassed to show the person and it's a whole to do. Okay, that's works. Make sure the line is straight because his shin bone would be straight. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to go over and do the hands, and while I'm doing the hands, the other paint's going to dry. Make sure I get a knuckle in there. This is another hand right here. That's like underneath. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. I don't wanna tackle the face yet, so we'll just call it. I'm gonna wash my brush, get it really pretty. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly dry this. good. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lighten my skin. Now some people when they paint skin they go and they pre-do all their colors and everything and mix it all out. I kind of go with the flow especially because this is an 8x10 canvas and that's plenty of paint. So I'm going to go here add some blue or <laughs> add some of the brown the light brown and mix it in with white and it's going to become more of a skin tone that is like me. And his legs are going to be a little bit lighter than the rest of him. Now, because it is a painting, you can beautify paintings a lot. I mean, that was a thing that in the Catholic Church, when you see the pretty paintings on the wall, you don't see blemishes on Mary. No, she looks pretty. She looks hot. Um, okay, so there's going to be... We're going to color block this out a little bit. I'm going to put some highlights here. I'm staring at the photo right now which you can't hardly see, right? So the highlights are gonna be there. We're also gonna have highlights here. And what's gonna be a low light is there. We're gonna make that darker. And then it kind of the knee's a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this lighter. And turn the canvas. Now this part is leg but it's not in the photo, so I just kind of have to make it up. So I'm lightening. Which really was really thick paint. Paint kind of dried a little bit, so it totally covered that. And then I'm going to lighten some more right here. The really light areas. Okay, so this is kind of wet paint, so now I can do more. So once I get this on, which totally covered my first layer, very frustrating. You know what? I'm going to leave this down here a little bit darker. So I'm going to, there's the highlight. 
So while it's still kind of wet a little bit, I left the dark strip down there. I add some more little dark and make this skin a little bit darker, hiding a little brown. And I'm going to go in here and look at the picture again. Constantly reference your photos. Put a little dark right there. It's going to be the underneath. Underneath here is going to be a little darker. Right there in the middle before we go into our deep dark is going to be right there. They kind of touch each other with the darkness. There we go. A little dark there so we can see it. It don't look like much, but it is. This is also the adding of the cake. Okay. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit darker. Let's add some really dark in there and see what tone we get there. Yeah. Let's get that and put that in the middle. The trick is blending. So this is very similar to when we add makeup on our face. We want to blend so we don't look like a clown. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to blend. Okay, so I'm going to go in my deep dark color. And I'm going to add that at the bottom here. And then I'm, I'm going to add a big line to the shadow of where the leg is. And then after I add it, I'm going to blend it. That was good. Don't want to overdo it. Add some here. Some of that dark. And then blend it in. Okay. Okay, so now wash that off. While it's still wet, I'm going to go, oh, I should have done a dark area at the knee. While it's still wet, I'm going to go back in with the light brown. This is super, super light. And I'm going to go and add my little highlights. Add some highlight. Blend that in a little. Wipe that off because I got some dark on my brush. And I'm going to go back in with some highlight. And I'm going to work that highlight in. So once I added the highlight, I'm going to add a little bit of highlight here too. Take off some of the color added over here for the knee. Then I'm going to wash my brush, take the rest of the highlight off, and now I'm going to blend and try to make that highlight fade into the darker brown. I'm dry rubbing. Dry rubbing the colors and blending the edges. Blend, blend, blend. The more you blend and have the fade, the cooler this all will be. Blend that area. Okay, let's get a middle tone, and we also want we have the dark here, um, but let's get a middle tone in there. Oops, a little much. That was our dark. And have some dark, I can go back over here and put some dark down here. Also, blend that a little bit. So all I'm doing it for skin is going back and forth, back and forth repeatedly between the, shade, the shades. It's a little labor of love. This is why when you go to buy art, sometimes it's a little pricey. People get annoyed. And it's like, well, this is why. I mean, we're already an uh, hour and a half into this painting. 
So, you know, I would like to be compensated for my time, and that's why I'm not charging $5. Okay, there we go. We're in the middle. Line. Yep. Sometimes I go over the highlight just a little bit so I can go back and forth and then blend in. So like I just did that, I went into my highlighted section and wiping off my brush, and then I'm going to come back in. And blend. See? See how they come together nicely? Yes, they do. Need a little bit more paint. So it's almost like I'm watching the paint dry. And as I'm watching the paint dry, I'm painting. There. So now let's work on the knee. I mean, I'm loving this fade. I got the fade going on here. So now we're just going to work on the knee. And go ahead and look at that reference photo one more time. Take it a moment. It's dark and then it's white. Oh, you know what? The highlight comes up here. See? Oh, there's a, there's a white line and then dark. Okay. Good thing I saw it. Good thing. There is a line that is at the top of that knee. Oftentimes shadows and highlights kind of touch each other. So like this highlight I had down here is touching this highlight up here. Very common. Okay, so I did that. Wipe off the highlight. Gonna go, I got one, two, three, four. Four shades of dark, but I seem to be only in this area. So now blend that down a little bit. Put that there. Yep. Just color blocking it out. You can wipe it and then go back in and blend it. Do you see that amazing blend that just took place? So let me look at my photo one more time. Constantly looking at the photo. So we want to say that my highlight is here-ish. That I can see it. Okay, there are big clops of paint. Wipe off my brush. Go back into a slightly darker hue and go around the knee. Blo just kind of add that in there and block it out. And then as I'm doing this, the white paint's kind of coming off. Wipe it off again and then go back in and blend between the two lines to make them softer. Softer, as soft as we can get it. Okay. Uh, now there is a darker area here, so I'm going to add some dark paint to this area. I don't want lines. Lines are no good. Lines are no good. Making a middle tone, I'm blending on the canvas as I'm wiggling back and forth. The paint's coming together and blending. I'm gonna go ahead and, oops, wrong one. I'm gonna go in the middle here, and I didn't like that. I want a little darker, not a lot. Make this side of his leg a little darker. There we go. Going to add in some more highlight at the top so that way I can go and blend those two together to fade out that line. I don't want any crisp edges. That's the goal when painting skin. Don't make crisp edges. Mm, dry brushing, don't really want to be, want to mix more than dry. Okay, liking it, looks good for now. I'm going to leave it there and then I might revisit it. Let's do the hands now. Now the hands, I got hands. I can look at my own hands when I do this. I also have the hands in the photograph, 
which are right here, right there. They seem to be light on the bottom and dark on the top because the light is bouncing up. And he's got one, two, three, we'd see three plus the hand. Okay, so it's bumpy and there's two fingers. Okay. So we got two fingers. Let's do the light first. Let's do it all along the edge. We gotta remember bumpy. Ugh. Make the bumps. light color and I think we had two bumps for two fingers there we go and then we had that there we go okay so we got the highlight now we're gonna fade we're gonna roll up with the fade this paint is dry I'm gonna put my canvas my palette there okay so here's my darker color that I have and I'm gonna kind of put it here like glob it on and then I'm gonna glob some on over here okay so I'm gonna wipe off the excess of my brush I'm gonna go back over and I'm gonna wait wipe a little bit between these two colors to try to get them to mix together but I'm gonna try to stay just where I don't want to mix all the way into the light or the shadow. I want to just only blend where the colors meet. That's the big deal. Where the colors meet is the area that comes together. Uh, wipe off some paint, start again. Just between in the middle where the colors meet is where I want to the color. Now this one is great. I like this dark tone that we had underneath. I'm going to leave that there. I have the dark tone here which could add some more to let it get moist again. Okay, so I put the really dark tone, oops. Oh, well, it's okay, I'll paint over it, this little white area, I'll paint over that. Try to wipe some off at least so I can, there we go, okay. So I'm going to go, I had the really dark color here, so I'm going to go into a lighter color here, put that in the middle. See what I'm doing, how I'm creating this fade. Okay, they seem to mix really well. So now I'm going to wipe off the, br the brush. I'm going to go in between these two colors and I'm just going to blend out this middle so they fade in together, that they blend. Yep. And there you have it. I'm going to leave that. And then we'll, let's move on. And now let's move on to the face. The face is going to be more difficult solely based on the fact of the shadows. That's it. It's the only it reason. Now, I'm going to have, uh, take my pen. I don't need to have it on the canvas. It just makes me feel better that it's there. I'm going to make this area really dark because that's kind of a really big shadow that we got going on. Okay, I'm going to go back over to a lighter color. Oh, the, the lightest goes there actually. Fuck, um, excuse me. Just totally messed that one up. Dark over here. So I got dark, dark. I'm going to work from the darkest areas to the lightest. Okay, so I got two strips. I'm going to wash my brush, clean it out, wipe it off. Now I'm going to go into my, I'm going to go super light super light and I wanted the super light in the middle here and then I also want super light over here because there's um, the artery and it kind of sticks out now see how I've kind of striped it in I'm gonna wipe out my brush and then I'm gonna go in between the two colors and make a blend and I'll blend out the two colors 
so that they fade together. Blend it out. Okay, I think I can do some more blending on this one. Yeah, I can do more blending. So I'm going to go ahead and take the tone that is in the middle color of the really light and the really dark. And I'm going to go ahead and take that tone. I need to make some more. I'm a fan of mixing as you go because um, with me in the way that I tan and stuff like that, it's very uneven because I'm a sportsy kind of gal. So it's okay. There's so many different colors going on everywhere. I'm going to put this one in the middle. It's going to be a big stripe down the middle of the two colors. Yep, down the middle of the two colors. I'm going to wash out my brush. And then I'm going to blend. Blend the lightest to the middle. I'm going to blend a little bit more. Wash out, wipe out my brush, come back and on the other side from the dark to the light, blend that a little bit. Uh, blend it out a little bit more. Now I'm going to put a dark color there. I'm going to put the really dark color right here. Make sure that I have a nice crisp line for the neck. And then you know where I want another? I'm going to go back up here and touch up this little shadow area. I'm going to make that one a little, it's okay to have a sharp edge. This one, no. Notice how I keep wiping off the brush every time. I constantly keep cleaning my brush. Yep, I like that. It works. I'm going to let that be. I'm probably going to revisit that in a little bit. Now, he's wearing a beard, but it's not a really thick, dark, scary beard. And, ooh, let's do the ear. Ear is so easy. Everybody freaks out, and it's not hard at all. Dark in the middle, kind of a triangle, a little bit. See, because I have a line, a line, a line, and a line. But it's a curvy kind of a line, but it's still nonetheless a line, and then it comes down in here. So I've got the inside, inside of the ear. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, uh, let's do a big highlight, big highlight, and I'm going to go, oh, I have water here. If you get water anywhere on your brush, wipe off the water so that way it doesn't drip on your painting. I'm going to go here and add my little highlight. I'm going to kind of come around. It's still liney though, and then I'm going to come down. And then I'm going to come over, and he's got a little bit of, um, we're kind of pretty people in the sense that we have, we don't have huge earlobes, we have little tiny earlobes. Make sure that that's portrayed. Oh, and then we have the inside of the ear, right? That's like a thing. Okay, so we got that. Now I'm making sharp edges here. This is okay. Sharp edges for an ear are perfect. Um, I am going to go in though, and this is too thick, so I'm going to go back in, but this time I think I'm going to add this kind of brown. I'm going to go a little bit lighter just because, uh, go in here and make it a little smaller. And then I want to make sure that I have that roundiness of the ear The sometimes people get that pierced. I forgot what it's called. I don't have mine pierced. Okay. Let that be what it is. Okay, I wiped off my brush. I'm going to go back down into the really dark. And I'm going to put the really dark down in here. Now I'm starting to feel like my highlight color was a little too highlighty. I'm not really happy with that right now. So what I can do is I can go with a step down of a darker tone. Go down, my step down was this guy over here, and I can go and 
just a little bit, right? Just I'm just going to add a little bit of that. And then what I'm going to do is wipe off the excess. And then I'm going to go ahead and blend that in, darkening up my really light highlight. So what I've been doing is instead of blending on the cam uh, on the palette, I'm now blending on the canvas itself. And so that makes the ear a little darker. Now I do want to keep highlights. But I'm still kind of just there. Okay. I will go back and add some highlights to that. So now I go back in and just a little tiny bit. I mean, a little bit right in the middle, right in the middle. And then just a little tiny bit right in the middle, a little bit. And then a little bit of highlight right here because there's just a highlight there. That's where it goes. Okay, I'm going to revisit that. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Now the face is a little bit darker. Now I don't want to white go over everything and wash it all out. I want to kind of keep in mind where the lines of my face are. The last thing I'm going to do is hair. So... Let's say we want to start our skin with, I need to make more of this tone. Let's make some more of this guy. I like this color. Add a little bit of white in there. Oh, I think I added too much. There we go. I just want to have three distinct different little tones. That's why I'm very strategic with where I put my paint on the canvas. So I put colors I'm going to mix, I wipe off my brush. So I can have a pretty point and then put the paint back in. So I'm very strategic on my canvas where I'm adding all of these um, paints so that way they're together. So paints that I'm going to, I'm not going to mix the blue with the brown so therefore they don't need to be next to each other. But if I'm going to be mixing next to each other and I like to go dark, dark away and dark. So you see I have gray and I have the dark brown but yet I have the light browns in the middle. So that's just a helpful hint. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly outline this because I feel like I kind of lost my outline a little bit. I'm going to come back and fix this but for now. His mouth is a little open. I'm going to come and touch up the face in a little bit. Or, you know what? This paint. Let's go ahead and fill in everything. So he is kind of going to go away just a little bit. Sometimes you can still see your markings under the paint. The darker the shade of paint that you're using, the more you're not going to see your pencil markings underneath. If I was painting right now with like a yellow color, I would see his eye and everything. It would shine through the really light color of the paint. This one is not, I mean, it's kind of, I could see a little bit, but not much. Go up. I can always retouch up the hairline, which most likely I will. Oh, and then I have this light one. Got to remember there's some light skin here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that just so it can be there and it can dry. We will be touching it up in a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and do the beard. Hair is the last thing that we're going to work on. So I'm only, the beard, I'm going to just keep it as a one tone kind of a thing. Because I'll be touching that up later with some black. Um, I like this color. It's a pretty color. Okay, so his mouth was a tiny bit open. Not much. I don't want to give him too much of a pucker. There. Okay, so that's good. I do like this color. I could come back in here and add a little bit here. Do a touch up or two. Yep, 
There, see this is dry brushing what I'm doing. I hardly have any paint on the brush, like hardly any at all. And I've just applied a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go over these highlights just a little bit. Blend, blend, blend. The name of the game is blend. Okay. Wash my brush, clean it off. So now what I'm gonna do is go into highlights. Now, if you are good with putting on makeup, you understand where this all goes, and this is where I'm adding my highlighted pink color is to where I would add, add highlights and stage makeup. So we all know about the T, which is up here. So we block a color there. It's kind of gonna the color, come back to it. The bridge of the nose gets a highlight. Let's see, the, t the cheek is going to get also another highlight. Uh, side of the face might get a little bit if he's sweaty. The eye will a little bit. You would more want this for more of a female type drawing, but yeah, there is a little bit of highlight there in the skin. Well, then the nose and then the cheeks. I'm going to wash my brush, I'm going to wipe it, I'm going to go with my middle dark, I'm going to put some areas where there's middle dark, and as I do this I'm going to think to myself, how can I blend? And the nose is going to be dark. Okay, so I'm going to wipe off my brush. Now, without adding any paint on it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blend. Blend, blend, blend everywhere. But I don't want it to all be the same tone. The eye is a little bit. To keep the eye bright, I don't really need to blend that a whole lot because we're going to have an eyebrow there. So it's going to be very liney. Um, keep washing my brush because I, I do want to have tonal differences everywhere. I'm going to look at my photo for a quick second. Yeah, I'm doing good. There's going to be some dark areas. So I'm going to go back in with some really dark tone here. Some dark color. I'm going to add, there's some dark here on the nose. Nose right there. There's going to be a little bit right there. Um, some dark tones here. You know what? I think I'm going to need to dry a little bit. Yes, I want everything to blend, but at the same time I feel as though I'm kind of feeling it. I'm going to go into the beard just a little bit to darken it. I see some blue sticking out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dry it from here.
is drying the painting. I was just staring at it, and I'm not liking how there's no, um, there's not that many buildings. So while I'm waiting for it to fully dry, because I have some bubbles here and there that stick out, I'm not by any means done with it at all. I'm not. It's just that's the first layer. I'm going to go ahead and work on the buildings just a little bit. I'm going to give myself some tiny little guys. Lots of little ones. Oops, almost did it. There we go. So it's like there's a city over here, there's nothing, and then there's another city. Let's see if we can citify this a little bit more. So this is a nice little drive from one city to the next because we are so far out. We can see that there are distinctly, there's like maybe that was a park. I'm going to go ahead and wrap around and paint just a couple buildings. Yep, and just because overlapping is awesome, and I said I hated it before, but because I added all of these these buildings, I'm just gonna add a couple, just because it'll look like he is like overlapping on the city itself. And there we go. So there's a city, there's a park, big old wave. I'm going to do a couple cities over here, a couple buildings. Making sure to keep them very rectangular and square. There we go. Okay. I feel like there's more detailed now. Well, we gave some time for the skin to dry. Let's go back. You know what? Let's give the skin a little bit more time to dry. And let's go ahead and work on the clothing just for more time to dry. I'm going to use the white. I'm going to go in here and first put down some white, and then I'm going to go in with some grays. There we go. I'm going to take a picture so I can see where it's folding. Okay. So there's a highlight right here. But yet, there's gray tones behind it. Okay, so we're going to go back into some grays. Let's make some gray. Ooh, this is a really light gray. I like that gray. And we're going to add it here. Okay, so let's see where else is light gray. Right here on the collar is some light gray. Liking that. Comes kind of down here, some light gray. 
Oh, you know, where's the light gray next to the highlight? Right there. Honestly, you can really make it up at this point. There is some dark grays over here. So what I'm doing with the skin is kind of the same thing that I'm doing with the, the clothing. Have you noticed that? Going on with the darks and the lights and then blending. I do want a crisp edge right there with this one, but then it'll, uh, it'll blend. Some edges are crisp, some are not with clothing, whereas skin blends more. Where are these dark grays? There's going to be a lot of dark grays here. He's wearing kind of a long t-shirt, a long sleeve t-shirt. Doesn't appear to be wet. Okay, that looks good for that shade. So now, let's go ahead and make this shade a little bit darker by adding a little bit, oops, too much, a little tiny bit of black and adding it with the white. You gotta add some more white. So then I guess I do need a little extra black. A little extra. Get it in there, mix it nice and well. I'd like to say thank you so much for staying with me in this whole painting. Um, they do take a while. Their paintings are little works of love. So thank you so much for sticking out with me and I enjoy painting with friends. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so that way the next time it'll be easier for you to find the videos. It also helps me with YouTube so that way they're, they, I don't know, there's just a lot of ways that they favor people more and I kind of want to get out there and let the world kind of paint with me and have buddies. And if you, uh, you subscribe and YouTube sees that I have good stuff. They're going to push my stuff more and then more people can learn how to paint. And we could have lots of fun people painting in our group together. And then I'll be able to go live. That's the goal. I want to go live. And if I have enough subscribers, YouTube will let me go live. Right. Okay, so... A cool painting. I was really gonna edit this a whole bunch and change it up and I'm liking it. I can see why he really likes this painting or well this image. Yeah, this is a good one. So um typically if somebody were to I mean I'm just giving this to him because he's my buddy but if I'm doing this because somebody has approached me and asked me to paint a painting for them um I typically, my goal is to make $20 an hour at minimum, and then my art supplies, gas, all the other stuff, the time in which you spend talking to the customer, all that. I add up my hours for the whole go into the store. Obviously, I buy in bulk, so by buying in bulk, it really does help a lot, um, but because I'm... Uh, because I'm able to buy in bulk, uh, I can kind of not be like, oh, my gas was so expensive to go to the store. Because that's not really an issue so much when you're buying like a thousand canvases at once. Um, 
But I do like to add that in. I also think that how long am I talking to the customer for? Because, you know, time is money. Um, I had that. So because some customers, it has happened to me where sometimes they're extremely picky, which obviously they should be really picky. But some people are like, call, like this one lady called me every two to three minutes. And I was like, and I told her I was painting and she just kept, can you do this? And she, add, she kept making changes and I was like, oh my goodness. So I ended up just stopped painting. I waited a week and then she stopped telling me changes to make that she wanted. So then I went and painted it and I was very upset about why we had a consultation for an hour. Why couldn't in that hour you just explain to me what you want and then, yeah, I get it. And then we just leave it at that. And so I, it was very annoying. So in the end, I ended up charging her a little bit more. And then I also kind of, you know, after you've talked to enough customers and you've done it enough, you kind of start figuring out that, okay, well, I'm going to be talking to the customer for this long. It's going to end this amount of time in my day. And you kind of get a gist of how to kind of the idea. I mean, especially like if you're going to flea market, well, I'm at the flea market for 10 hours with my booth. So I, I, I like to get paid for my time. So then I think about that, that I'm still getting those are hours I'm working. I also budget in my materials into the price of selling the painting. So let's say a painting cost took me one hour to paint. It was an eight by 10. So I got my materials in there. Um, so let's say we put materials, gas, all that stuff. I'm going to go pay my light bill. We're going to put that at 20 bucks, okay, for everything all together because I am buying in bulk. That's why it's so inexpensive. And then 20 for my time. So there's 40 right there. And then we're thinking maybe talking to the customer at a fair for 30 minutes. Um, so there's another 10. So I would sell this 8 by 10 painting. If it costed, took me one hour to paint, I would then sell it for, um, for 50 bucks. So that's kind of the pricing that I like to do. Um, now some paintings are not so good and they're my duds. And when that happens, I just want to get rid of them. So I'll mark them to whatever. I'll take whatever. Oh, thank you for giving me money. It's like getting paid to do homework. Um, but I'm trying to pay my, my bills doing this. So because I'm trying to pay my bills doing this, then, yeah, I don't really want to be like $5. I mean, it still kind of annoys me a little bit. So all I'm doing is back and forth, back and forth, you know, I put in all the little folds and I'm going with white. Now I do want some places where there is true white. I do want that to be like a thing, but as you can see, I did true white here and it's like blah, right? It's just white. So and then you a little gray in there just so we can see what's going on. Ooh, I covered... I covered. Shouldn't have covered. Okay, let's go with some gray. Some gray down. Oop, that's a little dark. I wanted some dark gray right here that I painted and I covered. Yeah. Okay. I feel like my problem is right now that I'm not, I'm going to put this rag over here. I feel like what's happening is that I don't have enough tones of gray. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more white onto my, my palette. And I'm going to start making a bunch of series of different kinds of grays and then fill this all in. Um, so in the picture I see, uh, his shorts got like kind of a lot going on there. I think I'm just going to go ahead and make them red to make things simple and easy. Okay. So we have this gray. 
which was what we were working on. Okay, so now let's go and let's make a really deep gray over here. Really dark, lots of black. The more black you put with the white, the darker your gray is going to be. Uh, black is um, a very strong color, so uh, it, it's very overpowering. Oh yeah, dark, 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 dark. There we go, like that. Okay, so let's see. If we try to do a really, really light gray. So we're going to take some of this gray and add more white. And make a really, really, really light gray. Like we're going to go super light. So then all the kind of white areas that I had, like on the shoulder, right there, I can... Ah! Still way too dark. a lot of mixing you can do use a palette knife and stuff to mix I feel like when you do that though you're kind of wasting paint a little bit this is like one more step okay there we go a little lighter so the kind of whitey areas there we go. Now, another thing I want you to notice is that when I'm painting, my brush kind of makes lines as I move it across the canvas and those lines are kind of strategic because I'm trying to go in directions that things are in and that strategery of the line kind of helps make lines and it helps make shadows and by doing that it makes my life easier so it's kind of like it just I'm creating lines as I'm going so basically uh, pay attention to the direction in which your brush strokes are going. Different ways in which they're going to make a line there, right? So, like, these are kind of crooked little, like, there's a lot, lot of little things going on here with this shirt. And I'm making, like, little C motions. Okay, that's great. Um, do a little bit over here and then I'm going to go back in with some actual white that's on the gray already on the canvas and what's going to happen is it's going to lighten it up in some places and I'm going to start blending just like I did when I did the skin. Okay, so wipe off my brush, get all the gray off. Every so often remember to clean, clean your brush. I'm liking it. It's coming. You know, the more I look at this, the more I think I don't want to add that sun in there. I'm going to make it a day scene instead of like an evening scene. Yeah, like it usually doesn't. I'm sure you've painted with me a lot before, but like it usually doesn't take me this long to make these paintings. So I do feel like it's kind of a long one. And after a while, I mean, geez, how much are you going to really fret over stuff, right? Okay, so I'm just going to go straight with some white because there's already a bunch of paint on the canvas itself. And I'm going to go ahead and start just blending away. Blend, blend, blend. Honestly, I feel as though I spend, it takes me longer, I think, to create with, to paint clothing than it does take me to paint skin. When I do the shorts, 
I'm gonna try to stand out to be different from the shirt and I don't think I'm gonna use a whole lot of um, blending There we go, that's a good blend. Oh, whoops. Touched my canvas. And go with some darker paints get that back in there now if you feel exhausted that's totally cool because I'm kind of there I'm feeling it I'm feeling the exhausted with you and it's actually a good thing if you feel tired you should feel tired because you're using a lot of brain power and energy and I'm feeling it with you you know like this is what we should be feeling It means you work, you're working hard, you're learning, you're getting better, you're putting your whole heart into it. So don't be discouraged. If you need to come back to the video, I mean, come back. I'm not taking the video down. So it'll be here. That's another reason why I urge you to subscribe. So that way you can revisit it. I mean, now I'm painting this all in one sitting, but like the other thing too, it's like, I do this for a living, so this is what I do. It's a little bit easier for me because I do this all day. <laughs> I, I expect that I'm going to be doing it all day. Make sure that I get this little round here. I'm having a hard time with this lamp on the table. I'm going to go over that. This is one reason as to why putting down a base coat is a good idea. So then it's that won't happen. I think I'm getting pretty close to getting finished with this guy. He's starting to really come together how I want him to. I'm really liking what I see. Just a little bit working here and there. Just gotta keep at it. Keep on, keep it on. The more you fuss with it, the more the painting is going to start looking, uh, it, it turning into realism. The problem with doing a pop of red is that it's red. You know, there's like no other red anywhere else on the canvas. So maybe it would be better if I just only did his shorts in black. That might come out better. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to give this time to dry. I'm going to, of course, go back over it, but give it some time to dry. I'm going to be very careful. You're supposed to paint everything that's far away first, and then you paint things that are closer to you so that way they can overlap and that they give the impression of depth. In their overlapping nature and so that way you also have crisper lines because in nature you would have when you're overlapping have those crisp edges and lines this is where I'm taking an artistic moment because he's wearing sh shorts that are red and green and they got a bunch of colors in them I'm going to go bleh because I don't got any other red anywhere else. I mean, it would. If I would have done the orange in the sky, then yeah, it totally would have looked cute. 
and it kind of the, the colors would have meshed well together. And especially like, so if you're doing things that's like a uniform, then and somebody's paying you, yeah, if the shorts are red, the shorts are red. That's the uniform. Like if it's a military uniform, it is what it is. That's how it is. That's, you know, so it's almost disrespectful if you don't. If the person's eyes are green, you should paint them green. So far, so good. I'm really I'm digging this guy. He's coming out really good. Now, at the same time, I do want to fuss with him a lot and make him look really cool and to have him stand out from the distance. But also, I want to recognize the fact that, that it is impressionism that I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm not trying to accomplish realism because you can see how I painted the water. I don't want to have to go back and paint the water. I like the water. It works. I'm happy with it. So I got to kind of keep that in mind. Don't overstress. It's when you were starting out in painting, which is another reason that I chose to do impressionism to teach you this is because it's easier to make it look like a cartoon. And then the more you do, the more you practice, the more your figures will stop looking cartoonish. But in the meantime, it's okay to do a little cartoon. I'm going to give him a tiny bit of a butt. Just a little bit. Poop. There we go. Just a little bit. We're going to bring up the arm. Also with black, black is a good time in which you would... See, that's the thing. People say that there's no black in art and nature and stuff like that. But what if the dude really was wearing black pants, black swimsuits, black swimsuit shorts? I mean, well, what am I going to do? Paint it blue? When did they... No, they're really black. They were dyed black in the fabric. So that's a bunch of hooey, I think, when they say, don't paint with black. I got shadows. They'd be a little bit warmer if I painted them in gray. Which really they are. When I've scuba dived and when you go away from shore, they, they are pretty much more gray than they are. Which I can. I can go back and add highlights into the buildings and windows. We could totally do that. The more windows you add, the more it looks like you're closer and the buildings will be smaller. But yeah, let's go add some highlights to the buildings. There we go. I'll let that dry for a minute so I don't whoops and wipe all over the place. Could add a little bit of black, dry rub black, dry brushing some black into here because we are working the gray tones. Yeah, that works. It's coming. Yep, loving it. Okay. Gonna let that be for a second. Oh, you know what? Yeah, a little dark there. A little bit. Okay. I can make sure I wipe my hand because I accidentally touched on the black color down there. Let's work on the face a little bit. You know what? I have black on the canvas, so let's go ahead, take a moment to dry everything.
Okay. So from here, back to face. <laughs> okay, so highlights, shadows. Now, I have the basic idea outlines of everything. All I'm going to do is try to work on blending. That's it. It's all I'm going to do from here. So I'm going to try to get colors that are in the middle and just work it. Just keep adding and going, figuring out where I could blend some colors. Like right here, I could use some blending. could dry brush over the really dark area so you could still oh no I have paint came off so I'm gonna go with the my base tone and just kind of wherever I think that I could add some more flesh and redefine some areas highlight some places you know where we didn't add we didn't add a little shadow here on the earlobe. Of course there's a little shadow on the earlobe, a little line right there. Let that dry. Back over to the beard area. with some dark colors over here so I'm not really trying to block out as much as I'm just kind of trying to blend I'm more about just trying to blend than I am anything It's okay to give a dude a little bit of lips. That's fine. Totally works out. It's good to do that. A little bit of lips are good. Wash my brush every so often. Wash your brush. And go back in, do some more blending and shadowing. I'm going to mix these two colors together. I'm thinking if I have a nice little mixture of the two of these, they might have a little bit more of a blendy blendiness to them. Notice how I didn't mix in all of the tones. I just took a little bit away from each one. Ooh, I like that dark, that better. Yeah, that's a better one. Lighten up that really dark color. I like it. Okay, that's great. I love it. I love what I'm seeing. So now I'm going to be experimental and I'm going to add some of that dark color. I'm going to add some white into it. So I'm going to keep some of that original mix and then go off on the area over here and add some white. Mix that up. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six shades on my palette right now of different types of color. You notice it's clumping up. That's why my paint is drying out. I could mix it with some water, but I'm really close to the end. I think it's fine. It's going to work. Test this color. Ooh, look at that peachy color. Yes, very peachy. I'm loving it. Got some peaches because he's got a little beard. 
little peachy color. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush. Now, while the paint is still wet, I'm just gonna go and blend everything. Oh, it's almost dry. Oh, it's almost dry. Blendy, blendy, blend. It dried that quick because it's already dry on my palette. Oh, that's a quick. Quick one. Okay, so let's just for reference to help us try to get this face to come back. His eyes are black and his eyebrows are black. He has very dark natural black hair. Go ahead and fix that hairline a little bit. There we go. Okay, eyebrow. His eyebrows are very similar to mine. There we go. Okay, so Every time you go to make pretty little skinny lines, make sure you have a pretty brush before you do so. Now, I'm going to flip this upside down because I have this natural arc with my hand like this. So I'm going to go ahead and with that, I'm going to do his eyelashes. He's looking down. Stare at the photo a bunch and then just go and be brave and get it in one pass. I like it. I could add a tiny bit of black into the ear just to darken it a little because why not? If it's a girl, I could put a dot there for piercing. Um, I also want to get the top of this little hairline right here. I don't really typically add black into skin unless I'm doing like a really dark African person, then yeah. You could that could be a tone that you could work with a little bit, but very sparing. I'm, I'm talking like minimalist. The less is more. I like it. Wash my brush, get it nice, pretty point again. Let's see if we can add that beard. Now here's what's going on. Right there. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to do this. I believe in you. Now he can have any kind of facial hair, what's, you know, but it is, I am making it for him. So I'm going to go with a little bit of black. Make little lines, little lines. My brush has seemed to, see how I'm doing these little, little lines? And then we're just going to build up on those little lines. Oh, and he does have a little bit of a beard. He's got a little bit of a beard. Ooh, it's really looking like him. I remember when he was a little guy and didn't have a beard, and now he's all grown up. My tone is all grown up. I remember when this guy was a baby. I remember changing his diaper. I think I was 12. No. I think it was about 11 when he was born. Oh, there we go. Little lines. I want to make sure that I'm not overdoing it because I do want to see that there are little tiny lines. So I want to be very 
sporadic and sparing. These little side burns, they kind of, little side burns over here, they kind of together. Yeah. He's got like a patch of skin here where he's probably has issue growing the hair. Notice how they're, when I do my little hairs, they're all in an, in an order. The more I work at this, the more his beard is going to appear to be very beardy. I think I need to come up a little bit more. I do want to see a little bit of skin between. There's that little line right here. It's got some sort of a little goatee thing happening. I think I can... Yeah, we're going to add a little. Notice how I'm still leaving it so you can see skin. I still want to see skin. Because I don't want to have to go paint brown again. I am going to make it a little splotchy because I can see in the photo it is, even though that's not super wow. Now, in the photo, she's got massively hairy legs. Tona, I'm not doing that to you. Don't be a hairy person. So, hyper-realism. I'm going to come down here because he's got a little bit of a fuzz going on here. There we go. Uh, this is super profile-y, the way I painted it to make it easier. Um, in the photo, he isn't super, super profile -y, so I would see that there is a little bit of the other eyebrow and stuff, but I'm trying to make things easier. So then, let's see, let's go back into here. I'm just going to go down a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I like that. I mm, think it's working. Now I could make little strands of hair go everywhere, but I don't really want to do that. Uh, let's see. Let's fix the ear. Actually, let me dry this because I don't want to accidentally smear the black onto the canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and dry it. I can still see that it's a little shiny, so my video isn't extremely too long. I'm going to go ahead and work on something else while I'm waiting for that to dry. I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush really good, make it a nice pretty point. I'm going to go into some light grays, and I'm going to put some highlights into these buildings to give them a little bit more dimension. So we're going to take, I want to say this gray, and I'm going to go and just on every right side. So just one line down on the right side, which means the sun is then on that side. Cause we got light bouncing everywhere. So I'm gonna make sure that I get every single building. That by doing this also makes the building appear as though we're seeing kind of side, the side a little bit of the building. This makes the buildings a little bit more 3D. That we see them at a, that we're seeing the front and the side view of the building. I'm 
Remember to get every one of them because we want to, we're seeing all the sides, except for if there's a weird building. But for the typically, they tend to be rectangles. These little details make the painting a little bit more advanced and you can sell them for a little bit more when they look like they've got more going on and that's what these little details are. Quick little moments. Now notice how I'm not like re-going over and over. I'm just once, maybe twice if I need to fix it, but I'm just trying to do it all at once. I'm not, I'm trying to be perfect with it, but if it's not perfect, whatever, I'm letting it be because the more you touch it and mess with it, the more it's, ah, like that one. Then it's just, it's too much. Okay. Let's see, make sure we got all of them. Double check and look at your buildings to make sure that you have all of them. I need these ones down here. That's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch up the beach just a little bit. Now, if we wanted to, we could go and add another lighter line, but since they're so far out, out there, it's like blah, we don't hardly see anything. So I just want to let them be just two colors. Typically, adding three shades is always the best thing to do. Okay, so I just want to touch them up so that way all that light gray, I just want to make sure that The beach is there because the buildings when they're not coming all the way down to the beach am I nitpicking yes but the nitpicking is the more you nitpick the more it's gonna look like a, a, a classical piece the Mona Lisa he Actually, technically never finished the painting. He painted it for seven years and then died. It was a little tiny painting, too, so I think a lot of it just sat in his art studio for a while. He also moved during that time, so I think it just was in the back of a closet kind of deal. But it did take him seven years, and he never officially came out in public and said it was finished. Which, technically, I could finish here, but I want to work on this face a little bit more. I'm just not, I'm not really that happy yet. Having these things will kind of help me a little bit more see what I'm doing. Let's go with a really light highlight. Make sure we mix the nice one. My paint is so dry, it's clumping. It's okay though. I have some little highlights there, little highlights here, little highlights, extra highlights. Extra little highlights. A little bit of the mouth. Hmm. I'm liking it. How about we go with a little bit darker brown on the face? To... You know what? I'm liking it. Let's work on the ear. Okay. So, hate the ear. We're going to brown this ear. We did add the black and go over it a little bit. gonna go with the fleshy tones there we go maybe that worked I just gotta work at it that's all you gotta do just take a moment and work at it the more you work at it the better these things turn out
Hey, you know what? I think I got it and I know why. I'm gonna reshape my ear just a little bit. Go back into here and it's a little bit smaller. My family typically has small ears. My grandma had really tiny ears. That's what it is. I didn't like the shape of the ear. I'm going to turn this canvas around just a little bit to help me. I got some black on part of the ear, so I'm going to go ahead and retouch that up just a little bit. Do a little darker color. Well, I'm coming to the close on this painting, and I want to say thank you so much for painting with me today and following along. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or comments or anything, go ahead and uh, put them on the comments down there. Um, I have it, the notifications on my phone, so as soon as you comment, I, I always am checking these things. So I'll, I'll be around to answer your questions. Um, pretty soon I'll be going live when Facebook allows, or when YouTube allows me to go live, I'll be live. So... I look forward to that and seeing you there. Um, yeah, this has been a really fun experience. I'm, I'm pretty grateful I had the opportunity to just hang out today in my art studio. I'm really loving it. It's, I'm really happy that I have this knowledge. And I always like to end my videos and say, if you haven't done it today, go ahead and tell your people you love them. Let them know that you're there for them, that you need them, that they're a part of your life. Be with your people today, because you never know when's the last time you're going to see them. And with that, I want to say, you're my buddy. Thanks for painting with me today. Thanks for watching. Push the purple flower to subscribe and you can watch all kinds of awesome videos.